I'm tracking a strong storm system that's about to impact parts of the west with an atmospheric river before bringing rainfall and even some snow further east. In this video, I've got details not only on the atmospheric river for parts of California, but also the potential for a few tornadoes we could get as the system heads eastward. Everything on this video from that to our temperature anomalies right here. Thank you so much for joining me here at One Nation Weather. We're now at 2,940 subscribers. If you enjoy the rest of this video and you are not already subscribed, please consider hitting that button to get me to that 3,000 subscriber goal. Let's talk a little bit more about our pattern overview here using Weatherbell Maps free trial for these maps like this in the description. But you can see as we've been making our way through our Sunday here, we've been seeing some rainfall over mainly parts of South Florida. Some of that has come with some thunderstorm activity as well. Um, that's going to quickly kind of become irrelevant as that heads offshore and we're all dry as we head into our Monday. What we are going to be looking at though is a good bit of precipitation impacting the west with an atmospheric river event there primarily for parts of western California, western Oregon, but as well as some of the higher terrain there in the Sierra Nevada range, higher elevations in central Oregon, moving into parts of northern Nevada as we go through our Monday. This will also bring some gusty winds and of course we will see flooding concerns erupt as that persists. Look at this as we head towards our Wednesday afternoon. While most of the eastern two-thirds of the country remains dry, the west stays pretty active, um, and then you can see eventually we get a surface low to develop over the plains out of that. That heads eastward into parts of the Midwest, um, central and lower Mississippi River Valley region there, and then on over into the Ohio River Valley as well late Thursday as we go into our Friday morning again just out of this model solution here from the Euro we're looking at that system continuing to head kind of southeastward here sliding towards the East Coast maybe a little bit of snowfall on the northern end of it as well into parts of New England now let's take a look at that mid-level jet stream here to kind of show you what we've got going on with the overall pattern as I film this video that polar jet stream is dipping on down with a trough into the eastern United States that's what's contributed to our last couple of systems and that's kind of why we have a little bit cooler than average of an air mass there over the eastern tier and especially sinking on down into the southeastern United States but it's this next trough here getting ready to make its way into the west that's going to kind of kick start our pattern that we watched this week develop and you can see as I play this out you can see that one slamming into the California coast throughout our Monday here and we'll continue to see kind of the pieces of energy from that system feel the, the moisture the rainfall return here into parts of California with the high elevation snow as well and you can see how a piece of that is going to try and slide through the four corners region and eventually begin heading on out over the plains before kind of rejuvenating itself and strengthening again over the central and eastern United States as we head towards the back half of this week. Skip a little bit ahead in this video to see what happens further east, but let's talk about the west here first because again, into our Monday early morning here, say four, five, six, seven in the morning, very heavy rainfall over here over the Sacramento Valley there in California, northwestern regions where there's also a high wind warning in place. Also some very heavy Sierra Nevada snowfall throughout our Monday as we continue to see that flow on out of the south here and up there into parts of northern California. If you live there in Stockton and just um, parts of Sacramento, even on up there towards places like Redding, we're watching a severe weather risk as a few brief spin-up tornadoes will be possible. Um, so keep in mind the potential into the afternoon and evening hours for a few brief spin-ups, just because we have just enough warmth pushing in with this system with the southerly flow that gets attached. Um, into the higher elevations as well, though, we'll be watching the snow there, even some on up there into parts of Washington, into parts of Idaho, some snowfall getting going out of this system as well. And again, it, really the story is just kind of how long this lasts. It's not the most extreme and heaviest event we've ever seen here. There was a much heavier one a couple weeks ago, but it's kind of the duration of this event that really makes it a troublesome, you know, system. And even towards our Wednesday morning, still seeing some coastal rains there along the west coast, still seeing some snowfall pushing inland into parts of Nevada, even in to high elevations of Utah, um, northwestern Colorado, and southwestern Wyoming at that point. And we do really think, um, start to see things clear on out there as we head towards, say, early Thursday morning, but not before a good bit of rain. Looking at your model blend of rainfall, this is just through the middle of the afternoon here on our Monday. Some totals up there in that Sacramento Valley region already pushing two to four inches. Of course, those deep reds in the Sierra Nevada range, that's actually falling as snow. We'll look at the snow totals in a minute. Also on down there again, kind of towards places like Los Angeles, as well as some of those lower um, valley regions surrounding. That's where we really have to watch that flash flood threat developing as we go throughout our Monday here, and we'll take a look at what exactly the Weather Prediction Center is highlighting here in just moments. Um, but you can see, by the time this event really wraps up onto our Thursday morning, we will have picked up a solid four to six inches of rain over a lot of the Sacramento Valley, and then some of those isolated coastal regions, again, uh, surrounding Los Angeles, and they're just north and southeastward of town. I'm um, watching, again, four, six, four to six inch totals there with some locally higher amounts filling on in. So this is definitely a concerning event over that region. And in terms of what we're looking 
looking at here again out of the weather prediction center you can see that middle graphic here showing you that the highest flood threat that's in place as we make our way through Tuesday night notice we've got that level 2 flood threat starting on up there in the Sacramento region but notice all the way on down here into parts of you know say Los Angeles just there northward as well stretching along the coast there all the way up there towards places like Santa Barbara as well, through areas northward of there, all the way towards San Francisco, really watching that potential for an up to level three flood threat there. And then of course, on up there into parts of the Sierra Nevada range, that's where we're gonna be watching the very heavy snowfall come on down with extreme impacts out of winter storm conditions there up into the central parts of those high elevations in California, but even some of those higher elevations in the far northern part of the state, picking up on some major winter storm impacts. Here's how much snowfall you can expect out of this system. And again, it's gonna be kind of lackluster unless you're in those very high elevations of the Sierra Nevada range. In those elevations, though, that's where we're talking three plus feet of snow in some cases here just through our Tuesday morning. You can see me circling that area right now where we're going to see the very heavy snowfall come on down. But even as this event progresses and we start to see kind of a few more rounds head into parts of the Mountain West, I'm going to play this out a little bit more here. As you can see, by the time we're going to make our way towards the middle to back half of this week, notice how totals also fill in over the parts of northeastern Utah, southwestern parts of Wyoming, and the northwestern parts there of Colorado as well. Some higher elevation terrain there, picking up about a foot of snow as well, and that's going to be kind of the higher end in that region. Last thing out of the western system is wind gusts. We do have high wind warnings up for some parts of the northwest California coastline as well as high elevations there, and you can see as we go through Monday during the day, those greens and yellows hitting the coastline and in those high elevations is where those 40, 50, even 55 to 60 mile per hour wind gusts will not be out of the question here. So that's definitely why we're concerned on the windier side of the system. A lot of California, Nevada, parts of the west getting in on 20 plus mile per hour gusts though regardless, even if you're not in a wind advisory or high wind warning, always consult weather.gov for those latest alerts here. That's weather.gov. Um, that's the website where you can get those alerts from the National Weather Service. Now, as we continue to track this system eastward, we've got a little trailing boundary from a low-pressure system that's going to be in southeastern Canada as we make our way, say, here and towards our Thursday morning. That's going to interact with the surface load that I was telling you about that makes its way on out of the central plains, but really doesn't start kind of producing that precipitation as we head towards middle to back half of our Wednesday, but really into our Thursday here for parts of the mid and lower Mississippi River Valley through parts of the southern Mississippi. Midwest region, and then on over there into the Ohio Valley Thursday afternoon. That's where it's looking like some precipitation will be possible. We'll watch the thunderstorm potential, and I'll talk about that in a second, how maybe we could see a couple of spin-ups if the environment goes right. Um, but you can see just kind of overviewing the system a little bit more. Friday around, say, 3, 4 a.m., we're watching rainfall here from parts of Mississippi and Florida. Heavier rainfall on up there, it looks like, through parts of the central Appalachia region, as well as the southern Ohio Valley, and then maybe a little bit of snowfall on up there through southern New England. This low-pressure system heading off the coast as, as we head towards the late Friday. Notice it strengthens um, to a below 1,000 millibar low as it does so. If that strengthening happens just a little bit earlier, we'll have to watch for some severe weather as this pushes off the Carolinas and Virginia. That doesn't look likely as of now, but as this storm originates here late Wednesday going into our Thursday, we'll have to at least watch the potential to see if storms can tap into this environment. Yes, this isn't much convective available potential energy, but readings of about 500 to 1,000 there. Considering the environment with enough low-level winds in place in this case, I wouldn't rule out the potential for a few spin-ups or some kind of low-end severe weather risk to get going kind of late Wednesday and into our Thursday here over some part of eastern Kansas or Oklahoma, moving into parts of Missouri and Arkansas as well. Well, does look like that storm energy would fade as this heads eastward from there, though. Here we go, looking at the three-day total precipitation. So this is as we go from Tuesday evening to Friday evening. Now, most of this falling on Thursday and into Friday, obviously, here. You can see by the time we go into the middle of the night, Friday night, here's how much rain we will have picked up. From parts of southeast Missouri on over there into southwest Pennsylvania and into West Virginia as well, that's where it's looking like about an inch to two inches of rain will be possible, according to this European model solution. A lot of the rest of the eastern region picking up on about a quarter to a half an inch on average there. Um, but if we take a look at what the GFS is saying, this is a different model. Notice it still fills parts of Indiana, Ohio, and West Virginia with some of those heavier totals, but it extends that rainfall in a little bit more of a heavy rate there into places of Philadelphia, um, Albany, New York, New York City, even picking up on the inch to two inch potential. Overall, with the highest readings looking to be around that one to two inch mark, I wouldn't expect much flooding, if at all, out of this system, but, you know, maybe some ponding on some roadways and some minor creek and stream flooding as well, not out of the question. Question, um, as that heads eastward. Now let's do one last thing and talk about temperatures here because our temperature anomalies 
are actually a little bit below average here over the southeastern United States as we cap off the, our Sunday here, February 18th. But as we go into Monday the 19th, Tuesday to the 20th, look at this by the mid to late part of the afternoon on our Tuesday, looking like we'll recover over a lot of the country except the immediate east and west coast with 5 to 15 degree um, anomalously warm temperatures there over the central United States. As we head towards, say, Thursday into the mid to late afternoon, still looking warmer than average here over a lot of the east and central United States states. Notice again, maybe behind that storm system, we get a little push of some cooler air there through the east into the early part of next weekend. But by the time we go into next week, I think around Monday, February 26th, we could see some 20, 25, even 30 degree above average temperatures there sitting over parts of, say, Kansas and Missouri, all the way up into the Dakotas and Minnesota. That is going to be some really anomalously warm air in place. And those, we were just looking at those Euro ensembles. So that's a pretty good average to look at. Um, in terms of our six hour maximum temperatures out of the Euro model, just to kind of show you how warm we're getting this week, this whole area I'm circling, I mean, we're talking 60s and 70s really spreading on out across this region of the South Central United States and Southern Plains as we head towards the afternoon highs on our Tuesday. Through parts of Southwest Texas there in some of the um, higher elevations there of Western Texas, some spots getting closer to say 75, even 80 degrees on our Tuesday afternoon. Same deal goes into our Wednesday where it looks like a lot of this zone I'm circling will be close to at least 70 degrees here. But notice 60s spreading all the way up towards the Dakotas and Minnesota, as well as some 60s eastward into parts of the Mid-Atlantic. A really warm bubble here through this week. Um, and I just kind of want to skip ahead here once we get past our Thursday and kind of show you what that, that really anomalously warm temperature outlook looks like as we head towards next Monday. Look at this. This is Monday. Temperatures across a lot of the central and southern United States here in this whole area I'm circling. I mean, even into the Midwest, we're talking 60s and 70s. It is going to be really warm um, and no huge snowstorms in sight as of now. Um, please hit that subscribe button once again here. Um, at 2,940 subscribers of my 3,000 subscriber goal. We're almost there. Hit that button. Here's Weatherbound Maps um, trial in the description. That's it for this. Thanks so much for watching.